almost sunset. I'm not sure how good this light is going to be. Hello. Hoping I can make a video since I haven't made one in a while. And I get reason today because uh, there was some like uh, bully homophobes. There's our friends. There's some bully homophobes who uh, like were intimidating one of the artists here and like, you know, being verbally abusive to him and aggressive. And um, I ran him off because they were cowards because when someone who could actually fight back showed up and challenged them, they ran and they ran and they went out of town, but then they like came back into town a little while later and went back into Slab City. So I warned the camps in there to be on the lookout for those guys. And uh, just in case, uh, you know, they try to do it with someone else. And I figured why not start a live stream just in case they come back because they have to leave here to get out of slabs and it's almost sunset. So maybe they'll make an appearance again. I'm on top of the roof of one of my RVs, not because of them, because I like to hang out here and play guitar and whatnot. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, this camp is growing all the time. Uh, I, I, I lost count of the amount of people. There's 11 dogs now. All right, about, about 12 people now. We got some new beautiful people in. Uh, and 10 vehicles now. So we're doing okay. Growing, growing, growing. Um, all good people, too. That's the cool thing. Like, nobody's abusive. Nobody's a narcissist. Everybody's sweet and gentle and artsy. And I'm the only semi-tough person in the camp and I like that because uh, yeah so I have to be a little tough sometimes because uh, you know I'm the guardian at the gate here and like it's, it's worth defending Ooh, all the dogs let's see I'm gonna play some music at one point at some point but I just want to see if these guys show back up for now I guess I'm gonna have to take my sunglasses off to see the candies and stuff. Hi, Romana. Um, yeah, so, like, yeah, I, I, I prevented a gay bashing about an hour ago, and I just want to make sure if these people come, come back again, which they kind of geographically have to, because they're not from around here. Um, yeah, I want to make sure there's no confrontation or anything on the way out. But I know, I know they're not as tough as they want to appear because they came out here to pick a target and they picked a, a, a very young, very gentle person as their target. And then when I showed up, you know, actually ready to even do something about it, they, you know, they fled. So that tells me right there, you're a coward. Fight people weaker than me. I only fight people stronger than me. So if you fight people weaker than you, and I'm practicing against people stronger than me, who's gonna win? But it's just sad. It don't happen a lot. It can be a little dangerous out here. I mean, kind of like any other low-income neighborhood kind of thing, you know. It's not. I don't feel this is more dangerous than the Bronx where I grew up. It's about the same, you know. You have the, the same kind of low-income issues that you would have in any low-income community. Um, it's mostly peaceful, mostly loving. But every once in a while, you know, you get a get a predator or you get a or you get a bully and thankfully uh, we all you know are pretty close knit here in the slabs at least you know the people who I hang out with and we all come to each other's defense and we don't allow that kind of thing to happen so that's that's a beautiful thing uh, I didn't have that much in in the hood there were no hippies to mediate conflicts within the community there were no you know uh, I wasn't in a gang so I didn't have any protection so it's kind of like a target to everyone. And to, and, uh, so I appreciate it. I appreciate the hippies. I appreciate the, the you know, all the allies out here too. Um, one of the beautiful things about this place is it's so diverse. And there tends to be an attitude of slavers first, politics, religion, gender, orientation, age, next. Like, not that people don't have those conflicts, but people out there in Babylon, they don't put those conflicts aside for the greater good. Here they actually do. I see it on a regular basis. Uh, I don't see him so far, but I'm going to just leave my stream on for a little while. That way I'll just like perch it here and jump down real quick and 
like it'll be on camera. Uh, whatever happens, we'll see. I, I think they'll just pass us by and not stop again, uh, hopefully. But you never know. People are crazy. Or some people like Slap City is tough, a really tough place, toughest people in the world. That's not that kind of tough. Like, okay. and so you get a lot of young cis male jock types who will come here because if you come here and fight a slaver and win then you're tough or whatever but like slavers are tough but not in that way not in a we'll beat you up way i mean plenty of them can beat you up but they're tough in a sit in a in a, in a in the sand for 90 days when it's 125 degrees tough you know they're tough walk to town two and a half miles away and carry your groceries back on that's that's tough it's a different kind of tough it does it does breed somebody who can handle themselves usually but it's so sad like these kids just got here like the person they targeted is like that's how i know i'm not even afraid of these guys even though they look all buff and tough like if you are picking on you know if you're a, a couple of 40 year old jocks Picking on a, a, a 22 year old, you know, little gay kid who's obviously like, gentle, you know, and doesn't, they don't come off as intimidating at all. Um, yeah, then you're a coward. You're a coward. So, and, I, and the dangerous thing about cowards is you never know what they'll attempt, you know. So, anyway, I warned the other camps. Hopefully, they don't show, you know, they don't show up anywhere else and catch somebody else who doesn't have protection because I just happen to be here, you know, uh, thankfully. But what if I wasn't here, you know, like, yeah, they, they, they're not from here, they're not from town. I know most of the people and most of the vehicles in Slab City and then, you know, a significant amount in Nyland, the next town over as well. So, like, I'd never seen these guys before. I'd never seen that vehicle before. I didn't get a chance to get the plate, but, um, you know, that's the dangerous types to me. It's strangers who come here to cause trouble. And then you hear somebody got stabbed in the slabs and like we get blamed for that you know when actually most of the violence is perpetuated by outsiders slab city crimes against slabbers are more petty theft you know one-on-one -on -one fights like drunk belligerent kind of stuff you know um, even sexual assaults like you know uh, you don't want to be known for doing that out here <laughs> so like you know just there's no laws supposedly but but there's rules you know and yeah just, just silly you know like that's the most cowardly thing you could do is you know, try to intimidate an artist you know it's like ridiculous anyway the whole neighborhood knows that's the good thing about this place everybody within a m couple miles of here now knows to look for that vehicle and matching that description and hopefully they just leave but um, you know what worries me is that they were headed out of town when they stopped here and confronted that kid. Then I chased them off and they went out of town towards Nyland. But then they came back. And that shows like, did they not get their target? Are they looking for someone else? Like, are they coming back to confront us again? Like, did they go, did they go get a weapon? Like, I don't know what they did and why they drove past a second time. And now, there are some roads out of the back of the Slab City, but 99% of the traffic is, goes out this way. This is the road. I live on the main road. So you have to pass me to leave here. Unless you're gonna like drive through the desert, go some crazy way through control the canal. There's other ways, but like this is the way everybody comes and goes. Um, and since they're not from around here, like I'm assuming they're gonna have to pass back here and it's almost sunset. So that's what worries me. And that's why I kind of set the alarm to the community here and warned other people because if that sun goes down, now they're here at night, or they could come here, they could go anywhere else, they could look for a victim who's, you know what I mean? I was able to see that kid because I was 50 feet away and saw, what, ha and saw, saw what happened, but in the dark, I wouldn't be able to see that 50 feet away. So, you know, that's what worries me. And I don't know who those people are, I don't know what they're capable of, are they armed? You know, clearly they're fucking ignorant and aggressive. It's just sad, you know, it's sad got a beautiful rainbow community here and you got outsider people coming in like I don't go to your cul-de-sac and you know cause trouble like, why would you stop and get out of your vehicle and confront us somebody selling art on the side of the road what, like
Mm. Yeah, so I'm gonna smoke a cigarette, maybe to my guitar or whatever. Just hang out up here on the stream until uh, you know, at least until the sun goes down, and I, you know, then I'll then I'll keep an eye on it from the road or closer. Uh, yeah. But it would be nice if they left and I was recording that way. If anything happens, you know who did it. of dog rescue that's fun uh, I enjoy it we had a whole of dying puppy about 10 days ago maybe two weeks ago uh, one of uh, we got a puppy that was came in like super distressed and sick of parvo it was a common disease out here it, it kills a lot of puppies that are not vaccinated so like I try to help get the dogs vaccinated and I do lots of dog rescue here about the kennel I rehome the dogs I foster them I do some training and stuff yeah, everybody hates to, I don't say everybody hates, so there's like a whole bunch of us work together on with the dogs, and um, most of them have a hard time with the dying dogs, because they obviously love animals, that's why they're volunteering to do dog rescue, but um, uh, it's hard to hold a dying puppy, and it affects them, I see it, like I watch them cry when they have to, also kind of joyful um, for example we had that puppy um, it came here not eating dehydrated lethargic like just a hanging little rag you know um, constant diarrhea constant vomiting like you know um, my partner Sonia was, um, we cleaned them up and you know made them comfortable and my partner Sonia was giving um, electrolyte enemas because Parvo dogs mostly die of dehydration. They just can't hold anything down. It's a terrible disease, actually. You know, so it's, it's hard for my friends in the dog rescue to do it. But I've been volunteering for it, and kind of like I don't know. I guess it's dark, but like I like it. Why do I like it? Because like um, that little puppy, he died clean and warm, and like we held him literally, like even after he died. You know, just to make sure, like. And he actually like went through a dying fit like on day two. Like he died within 48 hours. I was getting him on day two. Um, he like you know ejected body fluids and he was screaming in pain and he was like dying right like that you know and like he and I was actually able to resuscitate the little guy. Um, I have two CPR certifications. I have regular CPR and I have infant and toddler CPR. That kind of translated to this little guy, so I like literally resuscitated this like little puppy, and uh, it worked. <laughs> um, I got him back breathing again and stuff. I stabilized him, I made him comfortable. Um, you know, like he rested, we cleaned him up again. Like um, he still died an hour or two later, but he didn't die in fear and pain, and like you know, can't breathe. He died. He can we be passed slow. He just close his eyes and they opened them and breathed shorter and shorter and shorter until he wasn't breathing anymore and you know like that little guy deserves that you know that little spirit deserves that like I don't consider it a waste that the puppy died and, I don't, and it doesn't I'm glad to be there for that little guy you know like I love him just as much as I love all the dogs here like you know we, we cremated him and buried him and made him a little thing over there and, you know so it's like one of those things that like it's not a job I would pick for myself but I just like happen to be good at it and get joy out of it and it's kind of like a dark thing that hurts people who don't see the world the way I see the world um, so I'm glad to be able to do that and there's like I want to say six dogs since I've been here I've helped walk them out you know like cancer dogs the blind the old can't walk the diabetes those kind of things like I'll ice cream cones and hamburgers until you know, and I'll be there with them you know like I don't know I think it's an important job like I always say I uh, I 
eat shit and poop rainbows for a living. You know, like you turn a negative into a positive. So if I could alleviate the burden of the people who are saving the dogs here, that they don't have to like have a traumatic situation watching the dog die, then I'll do it. I'm a little rambling, but I just had an exciting time, you know, I confronted those guys, like, I'm like, and that's how I know they're cowards, because, like, they were both bigger than me, but I'm not tender artists, so, like, even two of them still, then, like, why are you running from a 45-year-old dad, you know, <laughs> uh, I mean, I could be kind of very mean and intimidating when I want to, but, like, yeah. It's sad. It's sad that I even have to waste time on it. It's sad that they just can't sit out there and sell their art. Like, 99% of the people out there, um, love, you know, they show love and they honk. And, like, uh, you know, like we have a lot of friends here and even the tourists, they like, they like it. They, they, they admire our freedom, our independence, our salt of the earth, off-grid thing that we got going here, you know. But every once in a while, like, somebody causes, comes here to cause trouble. That kind of terrifies me because, I, like I said, I, I'm, I'm the closest thing we have to a like fighter here, and I'm not a fighter, you know. <laughs> uh, I'm more of a parkour bike rider, <laughs> hiker, you know. But uh, um, yeah, but I do the job, you know. I do the job, and we have neighbors and friends and like allies here who will back me up too. So it's not that I'm alone. It's just that like, I'm the first line of defense. You know, I'm not trying to be tough out here. I would love to just sit out around and play music and do art and, you know make food for all these kids and help dogs but you know people people test that i'm gonna read some of the comments hi debbie i don't know how to do the join thing you could totally join but uh I don't, if you tell me how i don't know how to do that i'm a noob with this uh streaming thing here <laughs> But anyway, yeah, that little art table is a beautiful thing. I'm willing to fight for it. Because um, the two kids who came here, they were leaving a bad situation. They're both LGBT. And um, they left a really bad situation out there. And, like, they belong here. And, you know, they, they've they only been here, well, they've been here a little while now. But maybe four to five months at the most. And, you know, that, this nine different people's art on that table out there like because different slabbers come and leave it here because we're very close to the front so like we get a lot of tourists have to drive by us you know so it's just a beautiful thing to see the whole community participating and them being able to have some independence and stuff and like some income you know i feel really good about that like uh, i got a uh, one two three four yeah, uh, five, like, special needs people, like, abused women escaping bad situations, like, you know, LGBT kids escaping bad situations, one guy's house burned down, so he's staying with us until we all, the community builds up another house, like, that kind of thing. And then I also have some, like, help. Sonia's an amazing help. Uh, we have a new kid, um, uh, Slip, who's, you know, also an amazing help. He's, like... He's very similar to me, but half my age. So, like, same values, same goals. So that was really easy. He just immediately started helping me, um, you know, do what we were already doing. So it's fun. I like it. Stressful sometimes, hard sometimes, but I wouldn't trade. I would never go back to a cubicle ever. Fuck that. You couldn't pay me enough. Couldn't pay me enough. So yeah, the occasional life and death danger out here, flash flood, fires, extreme temperatures, hurricane force winds, like, uh, but I enjoy it. I mean, yeah, I'm just an extremophile, like I really enjoy living out here. Oh, pickaxe, he used to live right back here behind me in the bunker, we were neighbors and now he's out there in the world. I think my phone might be dying. Anyway, I don't see any sign of gay bashers. Maybe I'll charge this thing up. 
do another video, whatever. Uh, can I check my battery while this is on? Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately my phone is going to die, but I promise I'm going to do more, 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 more videos. I was thinking actually about starting a daily video blog for Facebook and YouTube, just syndicating both, same video, both sites, but like trying to do that, at least a check-in like every day or almost every day. Because um, this is a lot of interesting, amazing things. Like some things I can't talk about. It's like, you got to be here. This is one of those places like, you know, I'm part of a community here and like a lot of the stuff stays in a community and we all don't. We like to solve our own problems here, so we don't necessarily put them out there in the world, you know. Uh, well, you know, if you hear that, like, you know, something happened over here, then you know what happened. There's my story. Some two people showed up in a dark gray SUV with a roof rack carrier. They were two uh, white men around 40 years old in baseball caps they had three dogs in the back and uh, yeah apparently run, driving around uh, harassing the vulnerable people is a fun hobby that's worth gas and the risk of coming here and doing it so that's the dangerous kind to me uh i have noticed a, 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 a heightened police presence today i don't know if that's a coincidence or not like that i did put the word out here so it's possible that like some other camp may have like notified the sheriff because I feel like generally you know once or twice a day I'll see them pass and in the last couple of hours since that happened I've seen like five cars pass so you know man, it could be something else going on whatever I kind of like being at the Gatiss Labs you know and get all the juicy details to see who's coming and going fun yeah we're starting a bunch of little businesses here empowering all these little entrepreneurs out here to you know make a life for themselves where they don't have to conform to gender and societal norms so like depending on what their talent is i like empower and encourage that so yeah.